Taxation is theft. The statement should be considered an indisputable fact, just as stating that a water molecule has a chemical composition of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. However, many people, either out of ignorance or simply misunderstanding what taxation is, deny the subjective reality. Some of these individuals say that taxation is not theft, because it is voluntary on the part of the individual's concern. The government is ultimately just a voluntary entity built on the premise of the governing and ensuring a stable society, sort of like a mutual insurance company. However, the government is not a voluntary entity. The government is not the people solving mutual problems. The government is not us. The citizens are not the government. The government does not in any accurate way represent the majority of the people. If the, ind if the government steals from an individual, how is that any different than when a non-government individual steals from another individual? In order to answer this question, the state and its qualities must be defined. The state is separate from all other organizations in that it has a monopoly on law, meaning that it is the only agency that can exercise decision making in the territory it claims and controls. Since the individuals who control the state can decide what is appropriate for themselves, they create law which applies for the government, public law, and law which applies to the citizens under government control and jurisdiction, private law. Public law is superior to private law and grants the governing entity privileges such as the ability to tax, expropriate, and declare war or murder. The government is the ultimate judge in every case of conflict, including conflicts involving itself, so no one so one can only appeal to government for justice, and thus the justice will be perverted in the favor of government. The statement of the state having a monopoly on the legal use of violence means that the state is the entity that can initiate violence without being affected by the laws it sets for its citizens. This is how governments manage to kill 270 million people without any sort of legal consequences. The state is simply not bound by private property. Thus, the answer to the question is that while there is no difference from a private property perspective, the government manipulates and creates its own laws of conduct, separate from that of private property. There are only two mutually exclusive ways of acquiring wealth according to Franz Oppenheimer. The first way, production and exchange of goods and services the way of the free market, also called the economic means. The other way, the way of theft and parasitism, the involuntary confiscation of one's property, also called the political means. The political means requires previous production for the exploiters to confiscate and it subtracts from, instead of adding to, the total production and wealth in society. Taxation is the quote-unquote legal expropriation of property as money in the form of a medium of exchange is private property just as any other scarce resource is taxation is one of the ways that the state survives along with the use of inflation creating a greater supply of money reducing its purchasing power the new money in circulation goes towards the government bureaus and ruling elites and thus are enriched whereas the citizens are poor as they are the latest receivers of the new supply of money but the money they earn via income or save is less valuable and has a lower purchasing power. There are many theories to justify the state's existence and the finance of its own survival via expropriation. However, I will be only looking at the two most popular ones. The first one is the social contract theory, and the second one is that the state provides people with essential services. Firstly, the social contract assumes that individuals have consented either directly or indirectly to the government's authority and the ability for the government to violate their rights. However, a contract has to be contractual and thus be made through argumentation. A contract depriving yourself of your property rights, specifically of self-ownership, is null and void because you eliminate the means of which to engage in argumentation to enter into relationship between government and citizen. In the case of the social contract, exclusive control over your own physical body and your actions. If someone voluntarily enters into something such as an economic exchange, it can be assumed that this individual can be allowed to leave or sign himself out. However, no individual can sign himself out out of the social contract. You must pay taxes towards the state with the threat of force regardless of if you use its services or not. There is no contract between the state and its citizens. It operates in a legal vacuum because the state is not bound by private property. The second argument 
In justification for taxation is that the state provides services such as schools, roads, and security. Without the state, apparently, these services will not be provided or will be provided at inferior quality if the free market were to produce it. And the free market demand facilitates production. If people want a particular good or service, there will be a private actor incentivized by the possibility of making profit to supply the demands of individuals. All the services which the state currently provides can be done more efficiently through a voluntary free market and the system of profits and losses to incentivize providing services only when people actually want and value them. In a system of the free market, where no barriers of entry created by the state to stop individuals from entering any line of production exists, competition will drive up the quality and quantity of the services while also simultaneously reducing the costs to sustain the services. Individuals are incentivized to provide services which people demand and value, including law enforcement, security, roads, and education, at the best possible quality and lowest cost to stay competitive with other individuals. Individuals will also only pay for the services they either directly or indirectly use, and thus no money will be funded to the goods or services that the individual is not using, unlike taxation. The main problem with taxation is that the state's values do not represent the values of the consumer, and thus money cannot be used to the same degree of efficiency. The ability for consumers to choose what to fund or pay for will drive, up, will drive production to meet the demands of the consumers, as opposed to the state providing individuals with what the government thinks the consumer needs or values. On the other hand, the state is a monopoly on the services it provides, such as law enforcement, and as with the tendency of every other monopoly, the state decreases the quality of its services while increasing its costs, money expropriated from its citizens, without fear from any competition. The services that the state provides are never free, contrary to popular myth. It is maybe free in the sense that an individual doesn't directly pay for the services. However, all individuals are expropriated from by their state to provide these services. Thus, they indirectly pay for these services. In addition to that, taxes are used to fund things such as war and bureaucracy. And these are purely mechanisms for the state to survive, parasitize, and expand, and not actual things that individuals demand or value, and thus will not exist in the free market. Unlike the state, individuals bound by private property have to incur their ex the expenses associated with their actions, and thus war and conflict will be discouraged and de-incentivized because war is extremely expensive and no possible benefit can be derived from it. However, the state shifts the cost of not only war, but also all of its other actions on the tax-paying citizens it steals from. The solution to the parasitical state and taxation is that of a private law society, a society in which every individual and institution is subject to one and the same set of laws. No one is above private property and everyone is bound by it. As Professor Hoppe states, no public law granting privileges to specific persons of functions and no public property exists in this society. There is only private law and private property equally applicable to each and everyone no one is permitted to acquire property by any means other than through original appropriation, production, or voluntary exchange, and no one possesses a privilege to tax and expropriate. Moreover, in a private law society, no one is permitted to prohibit anyone from using his property in order to enter any line of production he wishes and compete against, any, and compete against wh whoever, whoever he pleases. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye, and enjoy the rest of your day.